My name is David Evans. I am a paleontologist at the Royal Ontario Museum. Well, I'm in the badlands of southern Alberta. I'm just on the north bank of the Milk River, uh, and I'm actually sitting in a dinosaur quarry, and the dinosaur that we took out from here was a large duck-billed dinosaur. There are a number of, uh, of misconceptions about paleontology out there, and, and one of the big ones is how paleontologists go about finding dinosaurs. So when a paleontologist goes out in the field to find a dinosaur, he actually spends most of his time walking, and uh, a paleontologist will walk for many, many hours before finding suitable, suitable specimens, and this is what we call prospecting. Now, it's taken from the gold miner's term, but in this case, fossils are kind of our gold, and that's what we're after. We don't look for sort of complete skeletons lying on the ground. We look for bone fragments weathering out of a hillside. If this animal is lying on its side, like these uh, specimens here in the ground say, all the legs and everything would be out that way. Out that way is over the edge of a cliff. So what that suggests to us is that most of this specimen was lost to erosion. But you never know until you dig in. What we have here behind me is a bone bed that is dominated by the remains of juvenile duck-billed dinosaurs. Excavating a bone bed like this requires a, a number of steps. Uh, the first thing we do after we find the bones er eroding out of a specific layer in the hillside, we remove what's called the overburden. And overburden is just simply the unfossiliferous rock that overlies or covers up the fossil-bearing uh, layer, or the bone bed layer in this case. Once the overburden is removed, and we've opened up a, a large quarry area, we then lay a grid over the site. And that grid uh, allows us to map the bones as we expose them. One of the biggest differences between paleontology today and paleontology even 50 to 100 years ago is the care we take studying the bones while they're still in the ground. So mapping is a very important part of this process and it allows us to take the bones in the museum and put them back into their geological and spatial context. Whenever we dig up a fossil from the ground, we have to be certain that we've completely excavated the rock from around the fossilized bone. Then to protect the bone from the next process of putting plaster on it, we put paper towel or toilet paper over all the exposed surface of the fossilized bone. We then mix up plaster of Paris, and then we dip our water-soaked strips of burlap into the plaster of Paris. And when it's hard enough, we pull out the slurry of plaster-soaked burlap strips, and we crisscross the surface of the fossilized bone, and then we wrap around the sides of the base of the pedestal. When the, the field jacket, as we call it, is hardened, we'll actually undercut with our chisels and hammers the pedestal, flip that block over, remove the excess rock from the bottom, and then we'll completely cap that over with a layer of burlap. Here we are in the bottom of the Milk River Valley, and we're at the site of the quarry of a hadrosaur skeleton. The skeleton was relatively together. A lot of the bones were very close together. So we had to make quite large jackets and we're left with a problem. How do we get these really heavy blocks from the bottom of the Milk River Valley to the top of the valley on the other side, well over three kilometers away with a river crossing in between? And the way we solved this problem was by the use of a helicopter. Today, we just finished a successful helicopter pull, and we now have the jackets of the hadrosaur in the back of the truck on prairie level. So we're hoping we can get these blocks that we just airlifted out of here today back to the lab and clean them off, compare them to other hadrosaurs, and we suspect that they might be different, and those differences might warrant a brand new species of dinosaur being named. So we have to go and join the crew and uh, celebrate the uh, finishing of this uh, very nice specimen.